Hey everyone! This week I wanted to dispel some myths around a concept which uh, I certainly hear a lot of and I'm sure you do as well and it's this concept of a safe to fail environment. So uh, we'll hear this a lot in uh, workplaces, we need to create this safe to fail environment and we need to make it safe to make mistakes um, so that we can start to cultivate that innovation culture because we recognize that making mistakes is part of learning um, some of us would say that making mistakes is synonymous with learning um, and, that, and, and we know that we need to we need to make that safe for our teams but I think it's it's a misunderstood concept and I, I think there's a more important reason why we need to do this and it's not actually about failure so making an environment safe making it a safe to fail environment I think is actually less about accepting failure and accepting mistakes and allowing those mistakes to happen. I think what it's more about and the more important reason that we need to go through this practice of actively cultivating this environment is because you need to make the environment safe to fail so that people will put their hand up and say, I don't know. Because if you don't make it in a safe environment where people are allowed to make mistakes, then it's certainly not a safe environment to say, I don't know. And this manifests a whole bunch of ways, right? We, as human beings, we have this craving for certainty. Like we know that it's hardwired into us physiologically. We've, we've got survival instincts that are around pattern recognition. It's about recognizing tigers in the bushes when maybe they're not even there and being able to react and respond. It's part of our survival instinct to, um, to look for those patterns, to, to make snap judgments, to, to put things in boxes, and then to, to move and make decisions based on the box that we just put it in. Um, and I was watching a Dave Snowden video this morning, which just, again, as always, blows my mind. Um, but he was talking about this response of um, when we see a pattern, we're looking for the first fit that we see rather than the best fit. So in any data set that we're looking for, that first fit is about what does our previous experience tell us? And as soon as we can lock it down, boom, we do and we move on, as opposed to sort of teasing out that process, making it a slower process of understanding what's actually going on here and what's actually the pattern that's behind it, our whole survival instinct is geared towards first fit and to certainty and to then acting based on having that certainty, right? And then it also shows up in the systems that we consciously construct. So many of you will have heard me rant about the education system and I ask the question, when, as a, when in our education were we last given points on an exam for asking a question rather than giving an answer. And the manifestation of that is that we then end up with leaders and executives that are many years into their career and still in this situation where we feel that as leaders we need to give answers. And all of us catch ourselves doing this at, in, at any point in time, right? It's this constant thing of we are trained to give answers. We are trained to try and lock things down and give certainty. Uh, and we're not trained to handle ambiguous environments, uncertain environments, and, and to sit with some of that uncomfortability to actually get to a better result, to actually get the better fit on the pattern and to get a better decision out of the process. We're constantly trying to lock it down and problem solve. And it's, it's such a quick thing. I see myself doing it all the time. I'm sure you do as well. But that craving for certainty puts us into solution mode prematurely. And so all of this, and all of this, the, the, the critical reason why you need to cultivate that environment where it's safe to fail is so that it's not not so that it's safe to fail, but actually so that it's safe to say, I don't know. So that it's safe for somebody to put their hand up and say, I don't know the answer to that. I need help to go and find that answer. We need time to go and find that answer. And let's go and do that due diligence and then come back when we have an answer, as opposed to feeling like you're constantly in that solution mode and you've got to come up with the answer on the spot. Uh, and, and I think that's particularly important, particularly when uh, as C-suite with senior leaders, working more directly with teams, you know, you've, you've got those, all of those internal pressures that people are putting on, on themselves around, this is a very senior person in the room and I need to perform and I need to demonstrate my competency and the way that I do that is by making sure I have all the answers. So we've got to actively work to dispel that, uh, that culture and dispel those subconscious biases within our organisation. So um, yeah, so that was what I want to share with you today. I think misunderstood concept. I think Whenever, we, whenever I hear us talking about safe-to-fail environments, I hear that sense of it's okay to have a failure. 
but I think that, yeah, the, the really critical thing is not only that, but also more importantly, that we can put our hand up and ask for help. So we're actively creating that environment where we're saying it's okay to be uncertain and it's okay to not have all the answers. And that doesn't, that doesn't lean into um, you know, a judgment around your competency or your capability as an individual. Actually, it's just part of the day-to-day -day work that we do and that we all need to get better with dealing with uncertainty because we are more and more frequently coming into those situations where we don't have all the answers. And so what we're trying to cultivate is a method and a culture around being able to navigate through that uncertainty as opposed to a culture that says we must eliminate uncertainty, we must have all the answers. So I want to throw that in the mix today uh, because I think, yeah, we, we all too often we, there's this sense that if I, if I cultivate a safe to fail environment in some way that means that I'm accepting failure. Well, no, actually what you're doing is opening up that space for people to say, hey, I don't know, let's go and find an answer together let's actually come up with a response that's well understood, that's well researched, that we've got the data to support, we actually understand the problem so that when we move, we're making a better decision about the direction that we're going. And that's it from me this week. Uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day and I'll see you again really soon. Thanks.